Well guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Heart Tongue Family Farms, and today it's grain hauling day, and I'm gonna do a video of how to drive a semi and how to sell grain to a corn processing facility. So what I'm gonna do first, I got a 93 Freightliner. It's a day cab. No, you guys can't see it very well, but I'll turn the flashlight on when we get to some important stuff. I'm just out here in the back, of, in the front of our shed. So I'm gonna do our pre-trip inspection. For that, basically, we just basically check all the fluids. We'll check all the tires and we'll make sure everything's looking good on this thing. So to do that, I gotta open the hood. How this semi is laid out is you get your engine up front, your steer tires, it's just like a normal semi. You get your drive tires right here. It's got a tandem drive line. And then we're hauling a, we're uh, pulling a 40 foot Tempty Super Hopper. It's a, it's a uh, commodity trailer. It's a 2019 model. But first off, what we gotta do is we gotta open up the hood. Two black straps. That's a pretty common thing on semis. And then normally you gotta pull from the center. There's a little grab you can pull from the center, but with this truck, it's pretty hard. So you gotta get it started on one end and then I just open it very slowly because you don't want to tweak the, the hinge. There we go, and that's not good. We parked a little too close, so it's resting on that. So I won't be long. So we'll check the oil, check the coolant, check all the fluids, and then we'll start it up. Probably have to give it some ether because it wasn't plugged in. The block heater doesn't work. We'll start it up, let it warm up, and check all the tires. Probably will need some ether. Yep, need some ether. Ready? Keep her going. Nope, needs a battery charger. When's the last time this thing was run? Uh, week. So the battery's dead, we pulled an MFR. But, so what we gotta do is, that's your air intake. We just gotta spray a little bit of ether in there once it, uh, once the engine actually has enough juice to start to put crank over. So we'll get the battery charger on it, turn it on boost, and then it'll fire right up. I should preface with this video, this is how I start trucks. This is how we on our farm start trucks and drive semis, and that's how we do it in this video. It's probably not the best. If you guys have any tips or pointers, pointers let us out. This is how we do it. This is how we've gotten along for a long time. We haven't gotten any tickets or violations or done anything illegal to our knowledge, so this is how we do it on our farm. Like I said, if it's not perfect, it's probably not the most, the best thing to do, but it's how we do it. When's the last time these batteries were changed? This fall. I was gonna say, I, I, say, I didn't think they were that old. There's gotta be something sucking power on this thing. Yeah. Something. <sighs> Shove her on boost and we'll get her going. Just a three 12 volt batteries together in series, or in parallel, I should say. Yep. In the meantime, I guess, if we wanna let it charge up, we will hit the So, I'm gonna grab a tube of grease. I'm gonna throw some grease on the uh, 93, or on the, the nice truck, the good truck with the 13. So throw some grease on the fifth wheel. It's always good to grease your fifth wheel. Having a looped fifth wheel is ideal. So what you're doing when you're greasing your fifth wheel is, where your semi and your trailer meet, there's a plate that goes up against the trailer that kind of helps carry the weight from the trailer to the truck, but it also it pivots, so you need to have it well lubricated. So that's how I'm gonna grease this while the 13's warming up. charger put the battery cap back on put the air filter back in close the hood check all the tires and get it ready to go i'm gonna go take the other semi the 13 freight liner get that thing hooked up to a trailer because we had this thing on our cattle hauler our bull rack nathan got it all shined up and washed up so what better way the next morning to get it all dirty again how i hook up the trailer after i've greased it as i lower the air suspension 
that's what that buzzing is right now. And then I line up the outside of my tire, basically the outside of that trailer. And I go out and check a couple times, make sure I'm lowered enough. So I'm not quite lowered enough. The reason why I'm lowering it is because I only greased the two thirds this way. So what else I'll do is I'll back up to the kingpins just about there, then I'll raise up and that basically, and then back up into the kingpin and that grease makes sure, make sure everything is greased. So I'll go ahead and back up about a foot. And don't worry, you guys have everything, everything on time lapse. All right, I'll back up another six inches, raise up, and then back it up enough so it locks in the kingpin. Now I'll back up. You should hear it latch here soon. There we go. Now before I even hook up the trailer and lower the jacks, I'm gonna pull ahead a little bit. Just make sure I'm latched. So the reason I did that is because you wanna basically, after you latch your kingpin, you wanna pull ahead and put some force on it because if you don't you don't know if your kingpin's fully locked because I've I've known people to basically pull away after they've hooked up the trailer brakes lower or uh, raise their stands their jack stands pull away and their trailer just boom so you always want to pull ahead and check your check and make sure your kingpin's locked that's the first thing that I always do and it's just a good practice to do so now we'll go back and hook everything up got my emergency brakes which is my parking brakes I got my service brakes, which is my, oh, sorry, emergency brakes, which is my parking brake, service brakes, which is my uh, brake pedal. I got my trailer lights, and this is my powering ground for the, tri the tarp. Hook all those up, and we'll head over. This is the crappy thing about not having enough shed space is when it snows, you can't just roll your tarp. You got to go ahead and sweep off the snow. So goals for the next 10 years to get another cold storage shed or Basically get a big heated shop right next to the, the main cold, cold, cold storage shed. It'll happen eventually, so I'm gonna take this over to the shop, get it ready, check out all the tires. When I'm doing my pre-check, I always grab something to hit the tires with. Whether that be a hammer, whatever have it. I always put my hazards on, so I double check all my lights. Also, I also put my marker lights on, so I'll make sure all my lights are working. You just go through and check all the tires. This takes some getting used to, to to feel when you have a low tire. This is much easier than taking a gauge and spending an hour and checking tires every single day. So I'm gonna go through and check all these tires. So that tire right there is low. I shouldn't be able to push on it. So I gotta fill up that tire. You can tell it doesn't have as much of a bounce. You can hear these have a thud. That one just... Good enough, bud. Good enough. All right, let's head out. Pushing both brakes. These, the truck brakes are the yellow. That, those go off almost instantly. The trailer brakes, which is the red, it takes about five to six seconds to all release if they're not frozen. So they might be frozen because they're sitting outside and it was around freezing temperature so we'll see we'll see if i can move in winter time when you're pulling away for the first time double check that your that your uh your wheels are free always double check that so how i do that is i pull ahead i was spinning i was wondering why i wasn't moving i pull ahead and then i just coast and if i stop right away that means my i have a wheel locked up but if i keep rolling like i am it means i'm good so I'll pull over, put some air in that back tire, and then get the snow off of this.
that's just emptying out that grain cart onto these trucks and we'll fill up and we'll fill up the rest. Yeah, she's like, you can almost move the thing. I hate semi-tires. I hate them, they're so hard to get at. All right, they're loading Nathan's truck right now. I just got this tire filled up. We always like to run, fill up our tires to 80, 85 when they're cold. Steer tires always have to be more than that. Then Nathan will take off, I'll get filled up. And I'll show you guys how we sell our grain at ADM and how to drive this truck. And when you're loading trucks, it just depends on the truck on how full you gotta fill it for gauges and stuff because every truck is different. Like our truck, even we don't have a single truck that's the same, so you just gotta get used to your truck. But I'm gonna go ahead and fill the, start filling this truck up. So I'll fill this truck up. Because this truck is a shorter trailer than that trailer, I can put two big piles and it should be right around 80,000. Well, not quite two big piles, but pretty close. So that's what I'll do. And like I said, guys, it just depends on your truck how full you can fill it. This thing I mowed so quickly, it's so nice. And what's really nice about it is you don't have to run, more, it's two less augers you have to run your corn through. Because every time your corn goes into an auger and out of the auger, the transitions is where it just gets all ground up. This is really nice, she's using gravity. I lied, that was a little bit more. Pat one and three piles first, so that's what I did. <clears throat> the only crap thing is you need two people for this truck top, but oh well. Time to switch over to the driving camera. I'll show you guys how to drive a 13 speed. See you guys in Clinton. Alrighty guys. So I'm gonna show you guys how to drive this thing. So 13 speed has one, so the top left is your reverse gear, and then you have three options. So split low, which is this black thing right here. Bottom left is first gear, then not moving anything. Top middle is second gear. Bottom middle is third gear. Top right is fourth gear. Bottom right is fifth gear, so I'm gonna split up and go top middle, and then red, red splitter down, so I'm in sixth gear. I'm gonna flick this red thing up. That is seventh gear. Down, and go down bottom middle, right like that. 
possible. And that way I save my actual brakes. Because in my opinion, an engine brake will last a lot longer than your liners. Well, liners are your brake, pump your brake drums or your brake drums. enjoyed that time lapse now we're just gonna pull in pull in the lane and get up to the probe shack apparently yesterday the line was just it was filled up both the lots and it was backed out on the 30 hey yay, yay now I give the probe shack a radio me and I'll give them my information of what I want my sell my load under and then they'll probe me oh man I got Nathan's truck all dirty so now they got the sample out of my truck I'm just waiting for the probe to tell me where I'm going to dump. There's a couple of different places to dump at the place I'm at, so I got to listen for that. They'll say my ticket number, which is 97, and she'll say rail or truck side, or I'll just tell me where to dump. And then, so she's grading my sample right now, and they'll tie that to this scan card right here, which has my number. So then when I scan in with my gross and tear weight, that'll tell them the, the weight that was on my truck, and then they'll match what the grade, so the moisture, the damage, for material and the test weight and they'll that'll, they'll take all that information and tell me how many bushels I hauled in and how much damage and dockage they'll give me so they can give me a final price and how much I'll get paid for this load. Now I dump. <laughs> almost forgot, always dump your air in your trailer when you're dumping on a pit that you can open all the way open otherwise you'll blow your airbags. Now it's different every place you go. But in essence it's the same. You get your test, you get your weights, then you dump your hoppers. You basically just turn in the crank so it opens the traps. And then you GTFO. You pull on the scale, get your outbound weight, and that's where you get your ticket to. And then at this place we can leave. Go back and get another one, rinse and repeat. And now we'll go home and do it again. I'm just leaving right now, tarp's closed. Nathan's right behind me. Go home, get another one, head home and head back. And I'll go through the dash a little bit later, but the other, the other buttons that I use are the red and the yellow button there. Those are my brakes. I have my engine brake, which is one of those uh, dials, or sorry, one of those switches there. I also have a trailer brake that I use, which is that big one on the top left of your screen. So before I close out this video, I'll kind of go run you guys through the dash and then we'll close out the video. Yeah, I hope you guys learned a little bit when I was at ADM. Now we drive home and do it all over again, fill up and come back. Like I was saying before guys, here's my cruise, engine brake, not sure, optional switch, optional switch, dome light, my marker like interrupter, so if I want to flash someone like say thank you, here's my lights and my wipers, my differential lock, so basically my four wheel drive essentially, fifth wheel slide, which basically slides my fifth wheel which is under my trailer to help uh, even my weight split, and then drop my suspension which I what I used earlier, 
my trailer brakes, my truck brakes, that's my hand trailer brakes. So if I wanted to hand, use a handbrake or if I needed more brakes, climate controls, radio, other radio. And yeah, so let's go ahead and fill this up again. So you guys can kind of see, I'll walk you through the ticket. So my gross weight was 80,700. So I was a little bit overweight there. So I, I'll change it for this next one. 25,400 pounds for the tear. So I had a net weight of 55,320 pounds. So how they calculate my bushels is they take that weight right there, divide it by my test weight, which is 53.3, and then they get my bushels from that, which is 987.86 bushels. So I hauled that, that's how much I hauled in that last load. I had a FM of 3.2, which will be a slight dock, but not too bad. Anything under three is good. Anything above three is bad. Moisture of 15.2, which is good. And no damage, no heat, heat, no uh, vo, vo much, I'm not even sure. No other bad things. And there's my ticket. So that's how the tickets work there, guys. Appreciate you guys watching. Hope you, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. I can do a follow-up video if, if you get, if there's stuff I missed. Please uh, let me know what you guys' thoughts are. If you if there's anything else that you guys do different that I don't, just please let me know. I'd love to love to talk about this. So here's the boss man. So I'll sign off right after right after I answered him. Hey Pat. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you guys did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram on Hearts and Family Farms. And of course, guys, as always, ta-ta for now. Lunchtime.